Hello everyone, welcome back to 3DX. In today's video I'm going to be creating a stylized chandelier here using Maya, then ZBrush and Substance Painter. Let's go ahead and get started. So here in Maya I'm going to start out by creating a low poly model and this is going to be my final uh, model that I texture in Substance Painter. I get asked that question a lot. Uh, people are asking if the ZBrush model is the final low poly or if the Maya one is the final low poly? So the answer to that is the Maya one is the final one that I'm creating for my low poly model. And to this model I'm going to be baking the high poly details that I'm going to be create in ZBrush later in this video. So that's usually how I work, for the most part, not always. Um, I create the low poly model in Maya export that to ZBrush and then do my sculpt details there and then export that from ZBrush as my high poly model and in Maya I do my UVs on the low poly which is the original that I created at first and then I export that as my low poly and then in Substance Painter I load in uh, the low poly model and in a big settings the high poly so I just wanted to clear that out because I know a lot of people usually have questions on that and it can be a little bit confusing, especially when you're learning. It can be confusing as to which one is the final model that you are going to use in the, your game or film or whatever the case is for the model. So I just want to clear that out. This is going to be the final low poly model. And this is also going to be the model that I'm going to be creating UVs for uh, because I know that it's not going to change too much in terms of the silhouette. So that's the thing, if the low poly model doesn't change a lot as far as the silhouette goes, then you can use it as your final model. But if it does change a lot in ZBrush for example, uh, you would need to retopologize that or decimate it or something and then recreate that as your low poly. But in this case, I already know I'm not going to change too much uh, for the high poly model. So this is going to be my low poly and I'm also going to UV it even before doing any sculpting. So in this case, what I'm going to do is for some of the areas that are going to be repeatable, um, I'm going to cut them in half and do UVs only on a section of it. And in this case for these specifically, I'm only going to be doing the quarter of the model. Mostly because I don't need it to be unique on every side, so it's going to be symmetrical. Now the candle itself I'm going to keep uh, unique, so I'm not going to uh, mirror or add symmetry to it. Same with these plates. And these two pieces here I'm going to uh, boolean together so that uh, it's just one piece of geometry instead of having two pieces stacked together. Uh, that's especially useful for games, typically, you know, if you have details like this uh, you want to weld them together. You can do it at the uh, modeling stage or once you're completely done with the model as well. So I'm just doing a few UVs here. And some of the pieces I want to be straight, so I do that. And I'm mostly just going to use the automatic layout because I think it worked really well. And I also mirrored all the pieces and uh, offset the UVs for the uh, overlapping UVs section. I do that just because sometimes Substance Painter has trouble with the uh, overlapping UVs. So I just offset those by one in the UV quadrant. And now I'm going to duplicate this as my high poly. And I'm going to add a few um, supporting edge loops. You can do this in Maya or ZBrush, however you want. Personally, I like doing it in Maya, just because I find it easier. But of course, you can always add supporting edge loops and stuff like that in ZBrush as well. I also used a special tool for renaming the model. Uh, it's a plugin. If you're interested in that, there's going to be a link in the video description. Obviously you can rename things manually as well. So 
So now I took that into ZBrush, uh, the high poly one. Um, and here I'm just going to add a few more details. Typically I like to divide the model and dynamesh it so that there's more resolution. So I dynamesh and then I just use the trim dynamic to add some details. And then usually at the end I subdivide it one more time and then use clay polish just so that the uh, some of the sections are polished and they just they look clean. I'm also going to be using some of the orb brushes. Uh, if you want to look for those, you can just do a Google search for the orb brush pack. You'll find them. Uh, they're really useful brushes and I highly recommend them. Now for the candle itself, I'm not going to go too overboard with the details. I'm going to use the clay brush just to add a little bit on top. But I don't want to change the silhouette too much because like I said, I want to use my low, my original low poly model as my final model. And if I change too much here, it's not going to match uh, very well when I bake. Which is why I'm not going too overboard with it. So I kept the details there relatively flat. Then here I'm going to use the orb crack brush just to add some wood uh, details here. I also noticed that I forgot to enable uh, symmetry and I was adding those. Um, like I said, this is a symmetrical model, so I did enable it afterwards. So in some areas the uh, details did not transfer, but I know that this is the spot where the UVs are actually um, non-overlapping. So that's that's why I didn't have an issue with uh, just continuing with the details. So some of the metallic pieces are going to keep relatively clean. Alright, so I hit the uh, unnecessary uh, overlapping geo and then I exported my high poly again. And in my I'm going I mean in Substance Painter I'm going to bake by mesh name and uh, make the model. I noticed there was an issue with the UVs at the top here, so I decided to redo UVs there because they were wrong for some reason. And you can re-import the low poly model and then rebake your textures. And then in Substance uh, Painter, I'm going to be using the uh, stylized 3DX material uh, as usual. If you're interested in that, there's going to be a link in the video description uh, for the tutorial on how to make it. I'm going to keep this one relatively clean. So I'm going to uh, disable some of the layers. I'm going to change the wood color and uh, duplicate some layers as well. Like I mentioned, I want to keep it relatively clean here. Uh, for the fire, uh, I used Geo for it, but obviously that would be, uh, realistically speaking, in a production setting that would be made uh, through VFX, stuff like that. Uh, but for this case, just for presentation purposes, that would, it would look cool to have it there. I'm not a VFX artist, so I wouldn't, I don't know how to make it. Uh, I don't know how to make those flames. So I just used Geo in this case. Like I said, realistically speaking, that would be done through VFX and not Geo like this. Alrighty, here's the final render in Mamosa 2 back. If you liked the video, make sure you hit the like button and uh, hopefully I'll see you in a future video. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, 
ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and Unreal Engine, so you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything, so click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.